Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Airflow, and welcome back to another video. Just before we get into today's video, guys, I just want to ask a quick question if any of you know or are a graphics designer because I'm looking for some new graphics for the channel. I am willing to pay, so if you do know anyone, hit me up. My Instagram's just along there. You can see it right there. It's under It's Airflow, or there's a link down in the description if you want to find out more. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to set off now. I'm going to start driving, and we're going to get into, today, into today's video. So uh, let's get into it, guys. Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Airflow. Oh, no, I've only done that one. So guys, in today's video, what we're going to be talking about is my first driving accident. Now, if you do live in the UK, it's quite a high chance of having a driving accident in your first year of driving. It's just one of those things that you just got to go through. Luckily for me, mine didn't go on my insurance and I didn't get actually caught for it. But it was a bit of a... It wasn't anyone else's fault. It was 100% my fault. And you'll see that when, when I start talking about it in the video. So guys, before we get properly into it, I'm just going to explain a bit of the background of it. So it was at the time when I was working in Asda, and I was working late in there. I just got out of a two-year relationship, Now remember that, because that was a key part of the story, this is the funny bit about the story. I just got out of a two-year relationship, and it was about a month after, about a year and a month after I passed my driving test. So, it was quite early on, I didn't have a crash in my first year, but this was about leading up to, just a bit, 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 bit past my first year of driving. So I got a I got a text message from a friend saying, "Do you want to come up to Buxton? It's, it's a, there's a big uh, there's a car meet going on up there." And it was quite late as it was, and I was tired. But I thought I haven't been to a car meet. I was feeling a bit down from the breakup, and I thought I could do something to cheer me up. And cars have always cheered me up, no matter what. But the only problem is, it was in the middle of it was in I think it was November or December time, and up where I was going to, which is Buxton, it gets quite bad up there. I'm actually driving to the location where I had my first accident now, so if we do actually make it there, I will show it you. But it was, um, it was, it just get quite bad snow up there, and uh, so it, it, there was no signs of snow or anything like that. So I thought, yeah, go on, then I'll go for it. So I went, so I finished work at 11 o'clock, I got changed, I went up, I met him there, I was there for about two hours or so, and uh, I was there for about two hours or so. And then it started snowing, and he said to me, right, do you want to, do you want to give me a lift home? And I said, yeah, I'll give you a lift home because. Like he needs to get home and it was snowing and he couldn't drive at the time like so he give, I gave him a lift home and the snow got really bad like listen mate I wouldn't go back to that car but he, actually, he said just go home because you're actually going to get stuck in the snow and I thought nothing of it because when, when you first pass your driving test you think nothing of it you think well you're not going to crash you feel like you're invincible like it's, it's stupid if you because um, just a quick like background story but there's my next door neighbour got a got a new car and I told him not to. He got a brand new 17 plate car when he first passed the driving test. I told him not to. Uh, for example, I went, I bought a picture of my car on the screen right now. Mine was a 2000 uh, X Reg Polo match, which was a really good car. I had it modified, I had it lowered, I had an exhaust on it. Before I had this accident, I was actually thinking of engine swapping it. But I didn't go through with that at the end. Because after I had my first accident, the car just kind of like, well, problem after problem after problem came. But he crashed his car twice in his first year of driving. Uh, it's been about a year now but he still hasn't got a car because of insurance or anything like that so if it, in my opinion guys if you're gonna have a car I wouldn't have a I wouldn't have a brand new car my car had my first car my polo had it had 80,000 miles on it and it was in very good condition had full, full service history and I got it for 600 quid it was absolute bargain really nice car till I had my first accident so I was driving home and uh, when I see cars in front of me, some of you might be like this, when I see cars in front of me, I think I need to get as close to them as possible. I don't know why, I still do it to this day and I really shouldn't, but if there's a car in front of me, I want to catch up to it. Um, so, I was trying to catch up to this car, there's a bit, this is where the story gets funny, there's a, there's a pub on a sharp corner on Leap Road, which is the Buxton Road, which I had my accident. There's a, there's a pub called uh, Bar Flash Stool. Um, something like that i'll leave a link in the description because the funny bit about it is it has a 24 hour camera on it and you could actually see my accident on the camera when i had it but it's a very sharp corner and the car went dead slow down there and i went right i can get around there so i must have been going about 80 miles an hour around the, around the corner you should be going 30 about about 30 miles an hour 30 40 miles an hour when it's dry bearing in mind the snow's at least three or four inches at this point and I went to go around the corner, instead of going around the corner... Yeah guys, sorry about that, my camera just cut out. So, what I was saying was, I come up to the bit where... Um, I went to go around the corner, I didn't actually go around the corner, I kind of drifted. Now, as scary as it seems, drifting about 80 miles an hour, heading straight towards a pub. It 
wasn't actually too bad now that I think about it. Well, basically, when you know you're going to crash, you know you're going to crash. So, basically, I just I just stopped. I just froze up. I just stopped. And I didn't really panic at all until I had my accident. So, when I spun out, I hit about... I knocked over four posts. I knocked over four posts when I spun out. And... Um, and then spun out and crashed like into the side of the bollard so it dented all that the outside of my car. I haven't actually got a picture, but um I haven't got a picture of it unfortunately. But yeah, I spun out, twisted round and took over like four posts and smashed into the side of a uh, uh, of this, like this bollard thing and it all did all the my passenger side door in. And uh, what happened then was uh, I tried to, obviously the first thing you do is try to ring someone, so I tried to ring my dad and uh, up that whole road there's no signal whatsoever, there's barely any signal and uh, I rang I rang my dad, then I rang my mum and said that they couldn't get a connection, I rang Jordan, he wouldn't go through as a phone call but he was texting me, but he couldn't pick me up unfortunately, but then uh, another person started texting me asking if they could get to me but no one could get to me because the snow was that thick don't no get up the hill. As soon as I was stuck on it, they closed the roads down. So uh, I thought I'll try ringing my ex-girlfriend, and I rang it, and for some reason, it was the only call that went through. She answered. I said, "Yeah, uh, I know you don't want to talk to me or anything, but I've just had a car accident. Is there any chance you can contact me, Dad? Let him, let him know." And she was cool with it. She was completely cool with it. She said, "Yeah, no worries. I'll contact him. I hope everything's okay." So she uh, rang me, Dad, and then my Dad come pick me up. But the first time he came past completely missed my car, he went straight around it, he couldn't see it because the snow kept coming down, the car was covered in snow by the time, because it's like an hour's drive for my dad to get there, um, anyway, my dad found me, he come pick me up, and uh, we went home, and then when I got home, I realised, because of my old polo, in the end, there was no central locking, so you had to open individual doors, and I remembered, like it was, uh, I was thinking at that, and I go, shit, I've left me left my passenger side door open all night but then I realised it doesn't matter anyway because it's buried inside the bloody bollard so the next day comes we went down to where my brother works my, brother, my older brother who you saw in the previous video he's a mechanic uh, we went to go down to see his old boss and he let us hire his recovery truck it was like a tenner and like 20 quid a few so it was 30 quid to hire it but bearing in mind that was an absolute nightmare because the amount of snow that was there and how cold my hands were connected with metal because I had no like I had to I had to wrap the wire underneath my car and uh, wrap, it, wrap it around the chassis base. Yeah, I had to wrap it underneath my car, wrap it around the chassis base. I remember my hands being so cold after doing this. And then a woman came out to me, this is the funny bit, a woman came out to me at the bar and she said, um, said have you reported this to the council? And I said, um, I said, I'm not sure. I think he has, I'll have to ask him. She goes, oh, is it not your car? And she goes, uh, she goes, it's not your car. And I said, uh, no, I've just been hired to come down and pick it up because I don't want anything. To, I want anyone to know about this because if someone found out, it's classed as dangerous driving. If someone found out, then I could have actually lost my license or got points on my license or something like that. So, and with the insurance at a young age as it was anyway, I couldn't really go for that. I couldn't really have any of that. So she said, I swore it was you. I was watching the cameras last night. On the, on the Flash Barstool website and it looked like you on the cameras and I was just like no don't, don't worry it wasn't me it must have been someone else I've just been hired to come get the car and uh, yeah it was a funny story actually um, so anyway guys if you did get any information out of that if you did find it funny laugh on my misery at the time it was pretty funny I ain't gonna lie uh, well at the time it wasn't funny now that I look back on it now it was quite funny so uh, anyway guys, I'd just like to apologise for not uploading yesterday. This was supposed to be yesterday's video, but I have been busy with work and stuff like that. I've got another video coming out Saturday, then there might not be any videos for four days unless I get anything planned because I'm going on, going on holiday for four days on my other half, so I don't know if there's going to be much out there. Anyway guys, if you're still watching at this point, thanks for watching. I want you to leave me a comment down below on what was your first accident, or if not, if you've ever been in an accident or anything like that. Or if you've not got anything to do with accidents, leave me a comment just saying keep up the good work or something like that. I'll happily mess anyone back, message anyone back. If you are new, please subscribe, guys. Hit the bell icon if you want to see more. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. It's up there, it's under its airflow. I said it at the start of the video. Well, there's a link in the description. If you do know any web designers, hit me up. Uh, I think that's it for this video, guys.
did enjoy, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe for more, and I'll see you on the next video, guys. Peace out.